Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting, the Building and Contracts Committee meeting of the Board of Education for Tuesday, August 6, 2019. And um, I am Kathleen Causey, the chair of the board. And in that capacity, I am also an ex officio member of all of the committees. And Julie Hen, who is chair of the Building and Contracts Committee, is not able to be here today. So I will be presiding in her absence. And I will try and, and facilitate the meetings as well as she does. With that, I'll call forward for the first contract, um, new business contract award ARA 213-19. Mr. Saris and Dr. Wisted, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, uh, first item is uh, ARA 213-19. Sheltered Instruction Observation Protocol. Uh, this is a consent to the assignment of this contract from Pearson Education Incorporated to Gateway Education Holdings, LLC, doing business as Pearson K-12 Learning, LLC. There's one awarded vendor on the original contract approved by the board uh, just in June 2019, and we're bringing it back just for the purpose of this assignment. Thank you, board members. Are there questions or comments? Ms. Rowe? So is it just a company name change? Okay. Well, uh, basically, uh, the company went from a publicly held to a privately held entity, so it's more than just a name change. They became, yeah held by a private equity firm. So no other terms of the contracts or pricing or services delivered are changed? No. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, the next contract, okay. please. The next item, KSH 322-16, language essentials for teachers reading and spelling. This contract modification will provide for the continued professional development of teachers working with beginning readers and to aid with identification and support for students who may have reading difficulties, including those with dyslexia for the Department of Academics. Approval is requested to extend the contract for five years and increase contract spending authority by $400,000, bringing revised total contract spending authority to $600,000 with the single vendor approved by the board in August 2016. Thank you, Mr. Saris, and welcome, Dr. McComas. Mm -hmm. Board members, are there comments or questions <coughs> related to this contract? Ms. Rowe? Um, can you explain more precisely what it is that this contract services are? Absolutely, so um, we shorten this and call it letters training. Uh, it is professional development for our teachers to help our teachers learn about the science of learning to read. We did a presentation uh, in curriculum committee a few months back, Mr. McMillian, if you'll remember our uh, reading ropes. And so this professional development um, helps our teachers fill in gaps that they really did not have learning on in their college degree to become teachers. There's been a lot of research around brain, um, brain research and the science of how the brain operates when you're learning to read and the different aspects of reading. And so what this professional learning does is it helps teachers understand how the brain works as we acquire language uh, skills in both um, uh, phonology and comprehension and helps them learn how to discern what uh, specifically students are struggling with um, and, and in particular can help uh, better um, identify students who may may show signs of dyslexia um, do you know approximately how many hours of professional development this contract will provide per year so this, uh, teachers who participate uh, go through a series of professional learnings um, and um, it's modules that are offered. And so I do have uh, with me today uh, Pam Wolf, our elementary coordinator. Ms. Shea's on vacation. Uh, so Ms. Wolf, if you could come forward and help me with the amount of hours of each of the professional developments. I know teachers work through um, several sessions, three sessions for each unit and teachers get trained on three units. Good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. 
Um, so letters is, it's each module, they build upon each other, and each module is one full day. It's six and a half hours of training, and then the module two builds on the first one, um, and then the third one, et cetera. So it's, we do cohorts of teachers, and each year we offer it to about three teachers per school, um, classroom teachers, special educators, reading specialists. We've had administrators join us as well. Um, and the idea is that we want to have all of our K2 and 3 teachers trained and then move up to 4 and 5, um, and then also have it part of our new teacher um, orientation. How long have we been doing this? Um, this will be our third full year. Um, is it too soon, or do you know if you're seeing results in our readers as a result of this? Um, so it's a little too soon and it's hard to correlate those numbers. What we do know is the schools that have had cohorts go through um, have done a much better job with early instruction and early intervention of getting to those students sooner um, because we know one program there's no magic bullet, and there's not one program that's gonna meet the needs of all children. So letters isn't an instructional program. What it is, it gives teachers the tools to know when to adjust instruction and how to better meet the needs of students to be responsive to instruction. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. McMillian. I had a question thank related you. to the funding source. It says here operating budget mm -hmm. and grants, and I'm wondering if you have the breakdown. Yeah, so over 90% of this is uh, funded through Title II because that's a professional development federal grant, um, and then there are minor um, amounts for the operating budget. Okay, thank you. We could move on to the next contract, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, the next item, ARA 223-19, uh, Social Emotional Mindfulness Based Intervention. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide social and emotional support services for the Office of School Climate. The approval is requested for a two-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $200,000. Thank you. Board members, any questions or comments? Ms. Rowe. So exactly how will this play out in the schoolhouse and exactly what kind of supports will students have access to? We are hoping to have uh, teams established at each of the first 50 schools that we're going to work with. So we would train a cadre of, of folks uh, who would go through the training of trainers program. We would also provide training <laughs> at the district level to some of the members of the division, uh, the Department of Social Emotional Supports who would then be providing support to the schools and coaching them, working with the vendor to also provide coaching at the schools. The first level of this work is uh, working with the adults. We want to make sure that the adults have these practices in place first in order to, for them to be able to model those practices with students. And then uh, once the, the, the educators become competent in their own skills around mindfulness, then we see them teaching those skills to our students. Okay, so is this, because I see that it's social emotional learning, is this, specifically for special education students or is this all students um this is this this is a new contract i'm assuming that this is a new thing that we're doing so can you just give me an idea of what you hope for this to accomplish sure great question first of all the vision is that this, this these strategies are good for all students and so it's not just geared for students in special education, but again, for students across the system. We also see these skills not just being behavioral skills, but skills that students can use in the academic setting so that as they're struggling with an academic task, that they can take a moment and step back and be mindful and take a breath or take a break if they need to. So we see those skills playing out across all students and across all aspects of the school day. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Dr. Neave. Thank you. The next item, CWA 120-19, Printing, Copying, and Reproduction Services. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide for printing, copying, and reproduction services for BCPS. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with seven recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $300,000. Thank you. 
Ms. Rowe? What items do we outsource um, printing for? Because don't we have all this equipment? We do have uh, our own printing facility. There, okay. I'm Jennifer Gorey. I'm the supervisor at Copy and Print Services. Um, these are items that we don't print in-house, um, such as some of the large envelopes that are inner office envelopes, um, payroll envelopes, um, blank check stock, money envelopes, academic planners. There are items such as um, Magnet school brochures and posters that are either too large or materials that we can't handle in house. This is like system wide bulk items? Yes. Okay, so um, this has nothing to do with the routine in school um, types of printing that happens in the schoolhouse. Yeah, this is actually stuff that most of the offices, I mean, it does it does affect some schools and things mm -hmm. that they would order, but most of it is um, items that are like stored in the warehouse that are ordered in bulk and then schools or offices can order them. But it's just things that in the print shop, we don't have the capability of handling. Okay, so you're in charge of the Baltimore uh, County, the Baltimore County. Mm -hmm. Office of so Copy and Print Services. maybe you can answer a quick question for me. Okay. At what point in time will the second floor of Lansdowne High School get a printer that the teachers up there can use? Because I've been getting inundated with this issue, and it seems minute. <laughs> that wouldn't be a question That's for me. That's not your would question? Actually that be would purchasing. Be Somebody that can find that question out for me? That okay, whoever you can help me. Okay, because second this is, floor of Lansdowne High. Yes, for some reason the teachers are very unhappy about this, and I'm sure there's an answer. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. you joining us. Okay, the next item, uh, MBU 527-19, Broker Services. This is a new competitively bid contract for insurance broker services for active employee basic life, active employee optional life, optional dependent life, optional personal accident, retiree basic life, and retiree optional life for the Office of Benefits, Leaves, and Retirement. Approval is requested for a 10-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $800,000. Thank you. Ms. Rowe? Didn't we just do something like this? Or is this a different one? It seems to me that we did a whole life insurance benefits contract. Okay. This is the optional life, like life insurance and uh, those things. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Good question. Mr. McMillian. I had a question, Mr. Saris. Um, so it says this is a new competitively bid contract for insurance broker services. What what were we doing previously? Was the, the previous bid expired? Was the expired? previous bid is expiring, and it had also been... Uh, a, a different broker and um, so we received five bids and are selecting uh, Bolton partner or re recommending to you to award the contract to Bolton partner partners okay all right thank you you're welcome Thanks. thank you for joining us <laughs> So I think the next one is mine, uh, for the most part. LKO 400-20, uh, Human Resources and Financial Management System Enterprise Software. This is a new cooperative contract for Human Resources and Financial Management System Enterprise Software. Approval is requested for a contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $10,336,000 over the next uh, five-year period. Ms. Rowe? Can you explain to me our 
bidding process and how it is that we ended up with only one vendor requesting solicitation and only concerns me when I don't see what looks like yeah. competitive, were they? So we have uh, been using this product since around the year 2000. Mm -hmm. um, we've been operating for the last 15 years under a cooperative agreement with Baltimore County government who uh, has funded this for both themselves and for us and obviously included the, operate, the maintenance funds in our annual budget, as well as two years ago, providing us with $3 million to upgrade this system. Um, and so the, uh, we're in the midst of the upgrade at this point, and uh, having been on the system for this long and have, having invested $20 million over that 16-year period, um, we did not feel this was the time to take bids and change systems, obviously. Okay. And so sure. uh, we've, uh, we also contacted Baltimore County to see if they were going to renew their contract when it expires in December of this year. And uh, they have not indicated what their plans are. So I told them that we'd be going ahead on our own. And so uh, one of the large clients of this uh, software company is the state of Michigan. And so we've, uh, we're using the cooperative provisions of their contract to make the basis for this award recommendation. So it's a cooperative agreement with Michigan. They bid it out, we did not. So if Baltimore County uses a different system, are they going to continue helping us to pay for this? Or yes. Well, I guess all the money we yes. get comes from them in the they state are. anyway. They gave, they gave us the approval to go forward with this. Okay. Just as two years ago, they gave us $3 million to upgrade this current system. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, uh, I suppose it's possible in five years, especially once the, the county is going to remain on this system for their financial products, uh, they are considering a different provider for their human resource and payroll systems. So it's quite possible that when this contract expires in five years, we may uh, be working again more closely with the county, but they've endorsed this. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Sears, I just had one question. So the state of Michigan, they did a competitive bid. Yes. And that's how they arrived at their contract. Correct. So our cooperative use of their contract it does reflect um, their a competitive bid. public entity process and do you know right. how recently uh, that was um, executed let's see here I don't have that information but I'd be happy to uh, provide it to you later on or in the meet uh, in the evening that would be helpful. Okay. And just in terms of the expenditures moving forward, it's how would you compare it with what we're spending now? Less, it's, same? It's comparable. Okay. Um, so that currently we spend about $800,000 a year on our maintenance, well, excuse me, $900,000 a year on our maintenance of the existing uh, maintenance and licensing of the dis existing product. And so what we've built in over this five year period is the possibility of another upgrade uh, and uh, which we can't predict at this point. So in this spending authority, we've added $3.9 million for an upgrade that might occur at the within that five-year period, uh, we've also added uh, about six hundred thirty thousand dollars for um, the document imaging component 
that is offered by the company, that that's going to would be a new product for us that would replace an existing third-party application that we use to scan all of our invoices and purchase orders and checks and so forth, to con which we've been doing for three years now, but we'll continue to build that uh, document archive uh, with uh, imaging software and some and another three hundred thousand dollars just for unanticipated modifications to the software that we might need so that's how we've arrived at this pricing but the pricing basically uh, our current agreement calls for the the maintenance fees to go up either two percent over cpi or and not to exceed six percent a year and the contract that we're bringing uh, is uh, an annual increase of 5% per year. So it's in that same range in terms of annual changes and comparable, and it's comparable, it's starting with the current maintenance fee that we pay now okay. with these projected possible changes. Oh, uh, thanks, Barbara. The Michigan bid was June 30, 2014. Okay, thank you, Ms. Burnop. <laughs> sure. Um, and then just a moment on the uh, document imaging module. So that's a standalone software application. Currently. That, currently. Right, and we've integrated it uh, with our system. The company, uh, CGI, which is this company we've been using and are recommending, they now have a product that they're offering through their auspices, which we would like to implement as part of this upgrade and we're hoping that we might have it done by the end of this calendar year. So that'll give us added capabilities way beyond what we currently have. For the same fee that's already included in this contract? Correct. Okay, great, that's very helpful, thank you. Thanks. And the next contract, please. ARA 200-20, Automated Vehicle Location, AVL System. This is a consent to the assignment of this contract from Discrete Wireless Incorporated doing business as NextTrack to NextTrack LLC. Uh, there's one awarded vendor on the contract approved by the board just last month. Um, And this is the provider for the uh, software used for our bus and white fleet uh, vehicle location system. Okay, thank you. Board member, are there questions or comments? I did have one question, um, just I didn't see it on this information. So next track was, um, was negotiated by Baltimore County government. Do you know if that was competitively bid or a sole source negotiation? To my knowledge, it was competitive. Okay. It wasn't sole source. I have a look contract here. Um, yes, it was competitive and as we've mentioned, uh, the, the county structures these bids so that they renew annually, and um, this one continues to renew through July uh, of, of 2023. Um, and of course, uh, it's quite possible that we will have made the transition to the radio-based system uh, before this contract were to run out. Okay, so it's gonna fulfill all our needs. Right. Okay, thank you. Next contract, please. Okay, uh, MBU 518-17, food products, cold sandwiches. This is a consent to the assignment of this contract from Advanced Pierre to Tyson Prepared Foods Incorporated. There are two other awarded vendors on the original contract approved by the board in February 2017. Board members, questions or comments? Ms. Rowe? So this is a company name change? This is a company name change. They uh, were absorbed by Tyson Foods. Okay. Has anyone examined the quality of the food to make sure it's the same? 
It is still manufactured by the same company. We mm -hmm. actually are using it for our summer food service program. Okay. So you're satisfied? Yes. Okay. Mr. McMillian. Good afternoon. Hi. I'm just curious, these individually wrapped sandwiches, are they the kind that are placed in vending machines? No, we do not use them for vending. Um, we use them strictly at this point for our supper program and for uh, our summer feeding program. They are wrapped sandwiches that are thawed and served. Um, we do not vend them. So when you said this supper feed program. Supper feeding, yes. Is that similar to the, the state was involved in a program a couple years ago that I'm aware of? It is a federal program by the USDA. It falls under the, the same umbrella as the, umbrella as the breakfast, lunch, and um, uh, after school care programs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, we have one more of these. Uh, MBU 520-16, Food Products, Commercial, and Commodity. Uh, this is a consent to the assignment of this contract from Ooh La La Gourmet Corporation, doing business as Buddy Fruits, <laughs> to Bowman Andros Products, LLC, and from Hillshire Farms to Tyson Prepared Foods, Incorporated. There are 32 other ven awarded vendors on the original contract approved by the board in May 2016. Board members, questions or comments? Ms. Rowe. So I see on here we have Ooh La La and Buddy Fruits. Are they, are they a local company? Are they out of state? What are we doing? Can we locally source our fruits? This fresh fruit? This is not fresh fruit. Okay. This is, um, you can see, you'll see it in the supermarkets even. It's those squeeze those little pouches. Okay. Um, we predominantly, we, you know, we have plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables, but these are predominantly used in our in-classroom breakfast okay. programs. All right. So this is not, do we locally source fresh fruits? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Through our, through our produce bid. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Thank you very much. Do you have the next one too? Oh, okay. Uh, CWA 119-19, provision of cookware detergents and cleaning agents. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide for various cookware detergents and cleaning agents for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $675,000. Board members, questions or comments? Ms. Rowe? So these cleaning detergents, are they disinfectants? Um, they are a variety of things. So we have um, uh, pot and pan washing. We have dish machine washing. We have floor care. Um, we do have um, sanitizer, which is uh, mandated by the health department to be used when washing pots and pans, as well as sanitizing work surfaces, food contact surfaces. And we do have a um, sanitizer that is used in the bathroom, strictly used in the kitchens. Okay, and so that sanitizer is a disinfectant? Yes, it's, the title is cleaner and disinfectant. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Thanks. Uh, the next item, JBO 725-19, Vehicle Parts, Materials, and Fasteners. This is a new competitively bid contract for vehicle parts, materials, and fasteners for the offices of Facilities Support Services and Transportation. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with 28 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $12.5 million. Thank you. Board members, are there questions or comments for this contract? Mr. Saris, so yes. is this a new vendor? Uh, there, are, there are 22 new vendors. Uh, we did this bid first about 18 months ago, and we had about eight vendors on the prior contract, and I know that 
transportation fleet maintenance was interested in expanding that. So we went out again and, and considerably increased the number of participants here um, so that we now have uh, 28 vendors, I think. Um, and added a lot of uh, a lot of other opportunities and uh, choices for the maintenance staff to use for purchasing parts. So this gives them greater flexibility, but also uh, potential greater response time for what they need to keep yes. our fleet yeah. moving safely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Clayton. Uh, next item, JNI 759-13, Maintenance Tools and Supplies. This is cons a consent to the assignment of this contract from Supply Works to the Home Depot Pro Incorporated. There is one awarded vendor on the original contract approved by the board in May 2013, which um, I'm pretty sure was the Home Depot. Oh, no, Supply Works, okay. It was Supply Works. Yeah. Mr. McMillian, you had a question? Yeah, Mr. George, we've had a number of these consent to assignments this evening. Mm -hmm. And so have we made the original deal with uh, Supply Works and then somehow they transfer that to Home Depot in this case? Yeah, um, Supply Work is a is listed as a Home Depot company. So, um, and the new company is called Home Depot Pro, and so they are just changing their presentation and marketing. All the terms of the contract are identical, uh, and it really is essentially Home Depot before and going forward. And so all the pricing and uh, terms remain the same. So back to the food one, you know, the consent to assignment. So yes, in that case, that, that was Tyson Foods actually acquiring other corporate entities. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, you notice that Next Track went from Next Track to Next Track LLC. So quite often, it is just a name change or a legal status change, and sometimes it is an actual acquisition. Uh, we also had the one with uh, Pearson, where they went from being a publicly stock held company to being acquired by a. a, a, a holding company or a private equity firm and change the nature of their corporate structure. So quite often, in, in all of these cases, most of these, the companies are essentially the same, uh, except for those two Tyson purchases. So it hasn't affected our deal, our original deal. No, it's they just have somebody to else is right. providing the service or the products. Right, correct. They have to honor these terms that we originally negotiated. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Saris, I had a question. So when this, um, and this goes back away, so I'll understand if you don't have the information handy, but this uh, contract goes back to um, May of 2013. So do we know if that was competitively bid? And also, I'm curious, since this contract has been in place for um, several years, has there been a vendor performance report done? And if so, has anyone looked at who has looked at it? Um, I'll have to get back to you with both, both of those responses. Um, typically, uh, we check for any negative uh, comments or reports before we bring anything to the board. So I can only say that I'm assuming the fact that it's here means we did check that, but I don't have the actual form in my folder here. So I, uh, I'm sure that it was satisfactory, and I'd be happy to let you know that, as well as uh, the number of bids that we took originally. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Moving along. 
Okay, uh, JBO 726-19, Hazardous Substance Cleanup, Disposal, and Associated Services. This is a new competitively bid contract for cleanup and disposal of hazardous substances for the Department of Facilities Management. Approval is requested for our five-year contract with two recommended bidders in contract spending authority of $500,000. Ms. Rowe? What sort of hazardous things are we cleaning up? Uh, I'm not sure if I heard the question. What sort of hazardous things are we cleaning up? Most of the time in this contract is the oil spill. Oil is spill either because of the heating oil or the transportation or gasoline product. There is strict federal regulation. Uh, we comply with those regulations to clean the spill. And uh, if, it's, if, if the oil has gone into the bay, sometimes we follow it through the track, the oil, where it's going, and satisfy Coast Guard's requirements. So how are we spilling oil? In schools, we're spilling oil? It could be, it could be a leaking tank, underground leaking tank. Mm -hmm. It could be just spill at the time of delivery. It could be spill other ways. But any time there is an oil spill and we are informed of it, we immediately are required to remove it. Okay. And do we have protocols in place to attempt to prevent spills? Yes. The board approved a preventive maintenance contract for testing, testing our tanks. Okay. But in spite of do doing all the precautionary measures, there are times when accidents do happen, when tanks do fail. So if it happens, if you see, it doesn't happen too many times now because of the preventive measures that we take. But if it does happen, we are required uh, under the compliance to Im immediately remove the oil and the soil that is okay. there. So mostly this is underground tanks? That's right. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions on this contract? So is this... Um, so are these new vendors than the previous uh, vendors that we were using? Uh, let's see here. I know one of them is the same. I think the second one is a new vendor. So uh, Kalyani Environmental Solutions was on the previous contract, and Allstate Power Vac is, uh, is, the, is a new vendor. And would you say that there are... Um, a expenses for this are going down or are costs rising for this type of service? We have been consistently around 300,000, but there was one year where there was a spill, and that was back in fiscal 13. So you see our request is for more than 300,000 because this spill can randomly happen anytime. So that's... Okay. Anything else? All right, thank you. Next contract, Next please. Next item, MBU 538-19, Stormwater Management. This is a new competitively bid cooperative contract for the purchase of stormwater management and environmental restoration services for the Department of Facilities Management. Approval is requested for an eight-month contract with a two-year extension with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $400,000 and this is a cooperative contract uh, bid by Baltimore County government. Board members, questions or comments? Mr. Saris, I would ask, um, what was the date of the Baltimore County government contract? Yeah, I'm looking that up here. Uh, it was bid on uh, Janu in January of 2017. They received five bids and made the award to the two contractors um, that, uh, let's see, that we've listed here. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. I know that we have uh, an item that was added to the agenda, and I don't know if I address that now or the regular meeting. Okay. Mr. McMillian, what's your preference? 
to a... do it now. This is one of the bleachers. In yes. The yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Why not do it now? Yeah. That's uh, fine. We have time. Uh, MWE 801-20 Auditorium Stadium Field Seating Bleachers and Installation Services. This is a new cooperative contract for Auditorium Stadium and Field Seating Bleachers and Associated Installation Services for Schools and the Department of Facilities Management. Approval is requested for a one-year, two-year, two-month contract with nine recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $2 million. Ms. Rowe and then Mr. McMillian. So I see on here the different funding sources um, is operating capital and grants. So what that makes me think is that some of this is for maintenance of systems we already have. Some of it is for new schools. And I'm not really sure what actually constitutes grants. Can you tell me what school projects these are for and how many schools? Yeah, let me, let me try to answer that question. Uh, there are a lot of requests we get that board approves under 7330, and these are grants that have been awarded by the state to either Booster or to Baltimore County Public Schools. The projects, some of the projects that we're talking about are New high, Newtown High School Bleachers and Press Box. That's one of the grants that we are anticipating. It's about $500,000. The other is the Towson High School Band Bleachers. That's another grant which is about $50,000. And there may be more that's coming in the future. So a lot of these requests are coming from DGS, or uh, processed by DGS, uh, started by delegates or the local electeds to boosters or BCPS. So if we approve this spending authority, yeah. does that mean that we will not continue to see contracts in the Buildings and Contracts Committee for those types of situations where X booster club wants a new set of bleachers or whatever, because usually we see those as individual contracts by project, That's and right. we can see that a certain amount of money was a grant, and a certain amount of money was raised by the PTA, and, a certain, and we can see exactly how much is coming out of our budget. Yeah. If we approve this contract, does that mean that we will not see those individual contracts anymore? You will still see all of the projects that are done under 7330, because board approves that, mm -hmm. and when we request approval, all of the papers, paperwork for the grant is attached to that request, so you will see that. For individual projects that may be 5000 or 10000 or less than $25,000, board will not see that just like any other project. If it's a boiler repair, it's a plumbing repair, which is five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 that we do on the contract, board doesn't see it. So it's very similar to that. So under what circumstances are we replacing bleachers and stadium seating for under that amount of money that would be covered under this spending authority? It could be, most of the time, it's repairs, but for the grants, it is installation of new bleachers. Okay. Yeah. We've been getting these almost annually, yeah. um, and so this, pri this spending authority is based on what we know is in the pipeline at, mm -hmm. at 500000 plus the fact that we've had these for Woodlawn High and other schools throughout the years. And so uh, we found a contract with, that specializes in these stadium bleacher installations. Mm -hmm. uh, and Do these things break a lot? Pardon me? Do these things break a lot? Uh, no more than any other structure. So this is a normal amount of spending, you think, for maintaining these facilities? It seems like a lot of money. And when I see that it's a capital budget, it makes me think. Maintaining them. This is for Towson High School. This is actually installing them. So it's a combination of both. The bulk of it is a grant that's uh -huh. actually going to install it for Towson High School. But they put in a little bit to also maintain some of the other ones that Pete may have small projects in. So it's, it's not all repairs. It's not all repairs in this. The bulk of it is that grant that he mentioned, as well as some of the others we got at other schools. So, so what, what capital project number is included in this contract? Capital projects are done through this and or individual bid for that project. If it's an entire school that is going to be bid and bleachers are part of those contract documents, board will approve the contract. 
Okay, so there are different situation. There is repair included in that, minor repair, but like Mr. Smith indicated, most of these funds will be utilized for grant-related projects. And okay. board approves every grant-related project because it comes through 7330. So we, re we approve that and we'll see that regardless? Yes. And the, yeah. what, what, can you give me the breakdown for the operating versus capital versus grants of this amount, roughly? I don't have the exact amount, but the operating part is very small. And if you force me to say a number, it could be $20,000, $30,000. But okay. most of it is installation. There are two so, projects, 50000 to 500000 that we know mm -hmm. are, have either been awarded or will be awarded and are in the pipeline. Uh, and we, knowing, going back over the past f five years and finding about three other bleacher stadium projects, uh, we just used that prior experience, added it to the 550,000 uh, that we know of because every spring the General Assembly uh, through its bond bill process makes these community awards. And sometimes the awards are not to the board. Quite often they're to a booster club. Right. So we may not that. spend this much. We may you just very want well it there in case. We, we would rather not spend this much. But, but uh, if there's grants, and that's what we have to we spend will, it on. We'll get the work done. Got it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Pete, you mentioned New Towns Project? Yes. And that's $500,000? It's, yes, approximately 500000 And what's the seating capacity for that? I don't have that. Uh, I can get that for you. I was just curious, because that's a lot of money. Yeah, I can uh, get that for you. And that was a money that came from the General Assembly? That came through a grant of some kind to either us or to Booster, or some cases they are both, to BCPS and Boosters. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, the, question is, the questions that I have um, are why is the change, what exactly is the change and why is it needed? I see where you say that um, it was determined expenditures for seatings and bleachers may collectively exceed 25000 annually and this contract could reduce costs and ensure compliance with board policy, but 25000 annually is a far cry from the $2 million that's reflected for just a one-year term. Yeah. So could you clarify that for me? Well, part of the reason is that we are getting more grants, large amount of grants. These two that I just shared with you, we did not get that large amount of grant. And the other part is that some of these had to go through long process of individual bidding and then award. It took, it takes awful long time. And a lot of these bleachers, schools wanted them as soon as they can. This will improve the efficiency of the delivery process. And the term is based on the uh, cooperative purchasing agreement that we were able to identify and document to our standard, so um, we're simply using the term that that the interlocal purchasing system had set uh, has remaining on their contract. So it's very likely we're not going to spend two million dollars in the next fourteen months. Okay, thank you for that explanation, and uh, that leads me to the next question the interlocal purchasing system. Could you explain what that is when that bid, when that competitive procurement was done? Uh, yeah, I don't have that documentation with me, but I know that we do have it in the office. So I'd be happy to bring that back this evening. For the full board's consideration? Right. Okay. It, it had, we have to do a very thorough documentation process and and I worked with Miss Webster on it so and we'll I appreciate uh, that this is coming up quickly it came up quickly is my understanding um, so that having that extra time between this meeting and the full board meeting I understand would be helpful to gather that information um, and then if you could just go back to how it's resulting in savings 
or does it result in savings? It says here it sh should reduce the costs. So how, how, how are we able to do that with this contract? Well, when, um, if we were bidding at each small project for 25,000 or less, um, we wouldn't get the economy of scale that we do by, uh, this particular contract actually has 14 different vendors, only nine of whom are uh, licensed or willing to do business in Maryland. So by uh, work, working with such a large group of vendors, you're going to get economies of scale. Plus, we have the ability to get quotes from all nine of these folks, which creates competition and hopefully better pricing. Okay. I would like to see when um, we come back with a full board the breakdown of the operating budget versus the capital budget versus the grants. One of my concerns is that we have um, a great number of facility needs in the district and it does seem like it's a lot of money when we're talking about bleachers um, and we have other vital needs as well so I would like to see that if, if the money's coming in from other sources that we can't move then that makes sense that we want to expend those be those funds to benefit the children. Um, but I think it is worthwhile to know what that breakdown is. So it's, it's strictly an estimate. All we know specifically is 550. Um, and most of these other projects are state grant funded. Um, so Mr. Dixit was accounting for repairs and possible other smaller projects, but there is no other known capital project that is going to detract from any other budget. This is just Department of General Services right now. And we don't know about the grants that are coming next year. Right. Okay. So if the board would, wants to change this number, that's fine. We'll bring it back. If we if we need an increase, I mean that's okay. That's an option to consider. Um, what I'd like to do, if it's uh, the if it's a consensus of the committee, is to um, have a motion for items M1 through M14 to be forwarded to the full board with the recommendation of this committee, and then to bring item M15 to the full board without a recommendation. So moved. Is there a second? All in favor, please say aye. So items M1 through M14 are being forwarded to the full board with our, the committee's recommendation, and item M15 will move forward without a recommendation, and we'll um, hear more information at the full board meeting. Thank you. If there's nothing Thank else Thank from board members, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.